the Education Unit of Excel Link in Nigeria Limited. In this tutorial, Excel Link presents Ayodeja Teaching Indices. Okay, it feels good to be back once again. In our first indices tutorial, we outlined these lesson objectives. The meaning of indices was explained to the letter. We stated the laws of indices starting with the first and second laws of indices, which we called multiplication and division laws respectively for the purpose of illustration. You can watch our first tutorial in indices on YouTube by typing the YouTube address in the Google resource locator. Press enter on your keyboard after typing the address. In the Google search field, search for the keyword Excelimka. Hit the search button after typing to find our first video tutorial on indices. Click the link as can be seen to watch our video. In this indices tutorial, we continue with the laws of indices. We look at law 3, which we call power law, also for the purpose of illustration. This law states that A raised to power M or raised to power N is equal to A raised to power M multiplied by N. This is equal to A raised to power M N. This implies that whenever an index number is raised to a power, the resulting transformation is the base of the index number or raised to power of the product of the indices involved. In this case, M and N are the indices involved. A is the base number. So the resulting transformation gives us A raised to power M multiplied by N which is the same as A raised to power M, N, since M multiplied by N is M, N. It is important to note that M, N is equal to the product of M and N. That is, whenever variables are put together without any mathematical operation between them, the default mathematical operation is a multiplication operation. But this is not the case when numbers are put together. As can be seen, 3, 2 is not the same as 3 multiplied by 2. This is because 3, 2 is 32, but 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. M and N as used in this illustration are integer numbers, that is, positive and negative whole numbers including 0. In our example, we look at A raised to power 3 or raised to power 2. Applying the power law, as can be seen here, this is equal to A raised to power 3 multiplied by 2. That is, A raised to power 3 is the index number and it is raised to a power of 2. So we take the base number, which is A, and we raise it to the power of the product of the indices involved, 3 and 2, which gives 3 multiplied by 2. This is equal to a raised to power 6 since 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. Alternatively, A raised to power 3 or raised to power 2 can be transformed as A raised to power 3 multiplied by A raised to power 3. This is so because A raised to power 3 or raised to power 2 means the number of time A raised to power 3 can be used in the multiplication operation with itself is two times. Reason why we have A in two places separated by a multiplication operation. This is equivalent to A raised to power 3 plus 3. Since applying our multiplication law to A raised to power 3 multiplied by A raised to power 3 gives A, which is the identical base, or raised to power 3 plus 3 which are the indices. This is equal to A raised to power 6 as our final answer. We look at law 4 which is an extension of the power law. 
This law states that AB raised to power M can be transformed bearing in mind that A raised to power M or raised to power N is expressed as A raised to power MN. So AB raised to power M is equivalent to A raised to power 1, B raised to power 1 or raised to power N. This is so because when a variable or number is not having an index, the default index is 1. So the default index of A is 1. The default index of B is also 1. So A raised to power 1, B raised to power 1 or raised to power M is the equivalence of AB or raised to power M. This is equal to A raised to power 1 multiplied by M, B raised to power 1 multiplied by M. This follows from the application of power law as can be seen here. The power outside multiplies the power inside. So M multiplies 1, we have 1 multiplied by M. M multiplies 1, we also have 1 multiplied by M in the case of base B. So compressing this, we have A raised to power M, B raised to power M. Since 1 multiplied by M is M, and 1 multiplied by M is M. That is 1 multiplied by any number does not change the number. In our example, we look at AB raised to power 4. Remember, the base number in this case has two variables, A and B. So this is equivalent to A raised to power 1, B raised to power 1, or raised to power 4 by the application of the extended power law as can be seen here. This is equal to a raised to power 1 multiplied by 4, B raised to power 1 multiplied by 4, since the power outside multiplies the power inside, and it affects all the variables in the bracket. This is equal to A raised to power 4, B raised to power 4, by simplifying this term. So this is equivalent to saying A raised to power 4 multiplied by B raised to power 4. Remember we said Whenever variables are put together without any mathematical operation between them, the default operation is a multiplication operation. We look at law 5. It is called zero power law for the purpose of illustration. This law says that A raised to power 0 is equal to 1. A can be any integer number, as we stated earlier. This law only holds if and only if A is not equal to 0. This is so because 0 raised to power 0 is 0, which clearly is not equal to 1. So the fact that A raised to power 0 equal to 1 only holds if A is not equal to 0. This argument can be seen from the fact that 5 all over 5 is equal to 1. 5 all over 5 can be expressed as 5 divided by 5. And applying our second law of indices to this, we have 5 raised to power 1 divided by 5 raised to power 1. Since the default index of any number or variable without an index is 1. This is equal to 5 raised to power 1 minus 1. Since 5 is the identical base. We take 5 and we apply subtraction to the indices 1 and 1. So this gives 5 raised to the power of 0. Hence, 5 raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. This follows from the fact that 5 all over 5 is equal to 1 and 5 divided by 5 is equal to 5 raised to the power 0. So if 5 all over 5 is the same as 5 divided by 5 on the left hand side of the equality sign. It implies that 5 raised to the power 0 is equal to 1 on the right hand side. This leads us to the conclusion that any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. Example, 10 raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Similarly, 100 raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. It therefore implies that 1000 raised to the power of 0 will also be 1. We look at law 6. This law is called the negative power law. 
the law states that a raised to power minus n is equal to 1 all over a raised to power n. It is called negative power law because the power or the index involved in this case is a negative index. By removing the negative sign, we have 1 all over a raised to power n on the right hand side of the equality. This is interpreted as a raised to power minus n is the same as the reciprocal of a raised to power n. Here, the index number with the negative power is replaced on the right hand side at the denominator with the same index number without the negative sign. This law only holds if and only if a is not equal to 0 because if a is equal to 0, we will have a division by 0 on our hand which is not defined in mathematics. The proof of this argument follows from the application of the first law and the fifth law of indices. Suppose 3 raised to power of 4 is equal to 81 and 3 raised to power of 3 is equal to 27. 3 raised to power of 2 is equal to 9. 3 raised to power of 1 is equal to 3. 3 raised to power of 0 is equal to 1. 3 raised to power of minus 1 is equal to 1 all over 3. As can be observed, there is a pattern in this arrangement. You see that when we have 3 raised to power 4 equal to 81, by subtracting 1 from the index and the, on the left hand side and dividing the whole number on the right hand side by 3, we have the next in the sequence. 3 raised to power 3 is equal to 27. We subtract 1 from 3, we have 3 raised to power 2. We divide 27 by 3, we have 9. This sequence continue when we have 3 raised to power 1 obtained by subtracting 1 from 2 and 3 obtained by dividing 9 by 3, which is the base number. Similarly, if we subtract 1 from the index 1, we have 0. If we divide 3 by the base 3, we have 1. In like manner, if we subtract 1 from 0, we have minus 1. And if we divide 1 by 3, which is the base involved, we have 1 all over 3. Applying this to 3 raised to power minus 2, we have 1 over 3 divided by 3. Since subtracting 1 from minus 1, we have minus 2. And dividing 1 over 3 by 3, we have 1 over 3 divided by 3. Which is equivalent to 1 over 3 multiplied by 1 over 3. Since Division operation is changed to multiplication operation and the next number after the division sign is inverted as 1 over 3. This is equivalent to 1 all over 3 raised to power 2. Since 1 multiplied by 1 is 1 and applying our law of indices, the first law of indices to 3 multiplied by 3, we have 3 raised to the power of 2. In general, a raised to the power minus 1 is equal to 1 all over A raised to the power 1. Similarly, A raised to the power minus 2 is equal to 1 all over A raised to the power 2, which can be read as A raised to the power minus 2 is equal to the reciprocal of A raised to the power 2. Similarly, A raised to the power minus 3 is equal to 1 all over a raised to power of 3. We look at law 7. This law is called the fractional power law. This is so because the index involved is a fraction. It states that a raised to power 1 over n is equal to the denominator root of the base or raised to power numerator of the fraction. That is, a raised to power 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a or raised to power 1. This implies that a raised to power 1 over n 
is equal to nth root of a. Note, it is read as nth root of a. We look at this example. 1. a raised to power 1 over 2 is equal to the denominator which is 2 from the fraction and the numerator is 1. So we have the denominator root of the base all raised to power of 1. Remember it is read as a raised to power 1 over 2 is equal to the second root of a raised to power of 1. This argument follows from the seventh law which says a raised to power 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a raised to power of 1. This is equal to the second root of a since index 1 is a material in mathematics. That is whenever we have a number with index 1 is the same as writing the number without the index. Example 2. 4 raised to power 1 over 2 is equal to the second root of 4 or raised to power of 2. This is equal to the second root of 4. Since index 1 is immaterial, we can remove it. The second root of 2 means the number that we can multiply by itself two times to give us 4 which is 2 multiplied by 2 so the second root of 4 is equal to 2 we look at law 7 and we generalize it in this case law 7 says a raised to power 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a or raised to power 1 so the first case of law 7, a raised to power m over n is equal to the nth root of a or raised to power m. If you look at our illustration from law 7, the numerator of the index is 1. Here we have generalized it. The numerator of the index can be any number. Example, 8 raised to power 2 over 3 is equal to the cube root of 8 or raised to power of 2. Remember, 3 is the denominator of the index and 2 is the numerator. Why 8 is the index? So it's as good as in the denominator root of the base or raised to power of numerator of the index. So this is equal to 2 raised to power of 2 because the cube root of 8 means what is that number that we can multiply by itself three times to get 8 and this is 2 since the cube root of 8 is equal to 2 since 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 is equal to 8 we have that the cube root of 8 is 2 and all is raised to power of 2 it can be seen here. Remember, if the index is 1, it is immaterial, we can leave it out. But in this case, the index is 2, so it is of consequence to the subsequent operation. This is equal to 4 as our final answer. The second case of law 7 generalized is a all over b all raised to power m over n. As can be seen here, Law 7, illustrated earlier on, has a whole number base, which is A. But in this case, the base is a fraction, A all over B. This is equal to the nth root of A all over B, all raised to power of M. The transformation is the same as what we can see here. The difference is that in place of the whole number base, we substitute the fractional base and in place of 1 as a numerator we substitute m. This law only holds if and only if b is not equal to 0 because if b is equal to 0 we will have a division by 0 on our hand which is not defined in mathematics. In our example we look at 8 all over 27 all raised to power 2 over 3. Applying this law of indices we have the cube root of 8 over 27 all over 3. Remember, it can be easily read as the denominator root of the base all raised to the power of the numerator of the fraction. This is equal to 
2 all over 3 all raised to power of 2. This is so because the cube root of 8 means the number you can multiply by itself 3 times to get 8, which is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. And the cube root of 27 is the number you can multiply by itself 3 times to get 27, which is 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 27. So we finally have 4 over 9 as our answer since 2 raised to power 2 is 2 in two places multiplied which is 4 and 3 raised to power 2 is 3 in two places multiplied which is 9. We look at law 8 which is a negative power law. This law states that a raised to power minus 1 over n can be expressed bearing in mind that a raised to power minus n is equal to 1 all over a raised to power n from law 6 and a raised to power 1 over n is the nth root of a raised to power 1. So a raised to power minus 1 over n is equal to the reciprocal of a raised to power 1 over n. That is we remove the negative sign and we write 1 all over the index number at the denominator without the negative sign. This law only holds if a is not equal to 0 because if a is equal to 0, we have a division by 0 on our hand, which is not defined. So this is equal to 1, which is this 1, all over applying law 7 to the denominator, we have the nth root of a. In our example, we look at 9 raised to power minus 1 over 2. This is equal to 1 all over 9 raised to power 1 over 2. That is 9 raised to power minus 1 over 2 is interpreted as a reciprocal of 9 raised to power 1 over 2. Applying the seventh law of indices, as can be seen here, to the denominator, we have the second root of 9. And the second root of 9 is the number that you multiply by itself two times to get 9, which is 3. So our final answer is equal to 1 all over 3. The 1 at the numerator is the 1 here, and the denominator is resolved to 3, which is the 3. We generalize law 8 by looking at this first case. A raised to power minus m over n. We apply this argument from law 8 and law 7. So a raised to power minus m over n is equal to the reciprocal of 1 all over a raised to power m over n. This follows from law 8. This is equal to 1 all over applying law 7 to the denominator. We have the nth root of a all raised to power m. In our example, we look at 25 raised to power minus 3 over 2. This is equal to the reciprocal of 25 raised to the power 3 over 2. That is, we remove the negative sign and we take the reciprocal of the index number without the negative sign. 25 raised to the power 3 over 2 can be transformed by applying our law 7. This can be seen here. The base is 25. The numerator now is 3. The denominator of the fraction is 2. So we have the second root of 25 all raised to power 3. Second root of 25 means the number you multiply by itself two times to get 25. That number is 5 and it is raised to power of 3. This is equal to 1, which is the 1 in this step, all over 125. Since 5 raised to power 3 means 5 used 3 times in a multiplication operation, which is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. The second case of generalization for law 8 is a case where we have a all over b all raised to power minus m over n. In this case, the base number is a fraction. We apply law 7, which says that a raised to power m over n is equal to the nth root of a raised to power m in our argument. So a all over b raised to power minus m over n is equal to the reciprocal of 
a all over b raised to power m over m by applying law 7 as can be seen here to the denominator we have the nth root of a all over b all raised to power of m alternatively a all over b raised to power minus m over n can be expressed as b all over a all raised to power m over n here we observe that the negative sign on the left hand side of the equality sign is removed on the right hand side of the equality sign the base number on the left hand side of the equality sign is inverted on the right hand side of the equality sign so a all over b raised to power minus m over n is equal to b all over a raised to power m n we can establish this argument by putting together law 3 law 8 and law 7 so a all over b raised to power minus m n when we apply the power law to this we have a raised to power minus m over n all over b raised to power minus m over n we say the power outside affects the power inside but remember even if we cannot see any power here by default the power of a number or variable in indices is one so the power of a is one the power of b is one so one multiplied by minus m over n we have a raised to power minus m over n similarly the power here which is one multiplied by the power outside is equal to b raised to power minus m over n Remember, we have applied the power law, which says that power outside multiplies power inside. This is equal to 1 all over a raised to power m over n. Since a raised to power minus m over n, when we apply law 8, as can be seen here, is a reciprocal of a raised to power m over n. divide by the all over in this case now becomes divide by the reciprocal of b raised to power m over n we also apply law a to this b raised to power minus m over n is the reciprocal of b raised to power m over n this is equal to 1 all over a raised to power m over n multiplied by b raised to power m over n all over n here the division operation has changed to multiplication operation the next number after the division operation is inverted so instead of 1 over b raised to power m over n we have b raised to power m over n all over 1 this is equivalent to saying b raised to power m over n all over a raised to power m over n 1 is an identity number it multiplies any number without changing it so 1 multiplied by b raised to power m over n is the same as b raised to power m over n in like manner a raised to power m over n multiplied by 1 gives a raised to power m over n this is equal to b all over a all raised to power m over n this is equal to the nth root of b all over a all raised to power and remember we have applied the seventh law to b all over a raised to power m over m so we stop this tutorial at this point and we crave your indulgence to look forward for our next tutorial on indices where we shall be looking at the operations involving indices and solving varieties of example in greater detail watching this tutorial you can play this video over and over until the techniques involved become your approach to solving mathematical problems in index form